In this video, I'm going to go over the Premier Products database, which is one of the three data sets that we'll be using throughout the textbook. This particular database is used, you is the one that is the main data set used in the chapter examples, and then there's usually a homework assignment that will be using this Premier Products database as well. Your first challenge is to locate the data set. You can log into the Cengage Brain uh, website and download all of the data sets for the class from the Student Companion site, or I've already downloaded these data sets and placed them into the document sharing area of your course. So if you go over to doc sharing in your course, you'll find the data sets for all of your companies located in that fo uh, folder. Make sure with each example that you do throughout the course that you carefully read to see if you should start with the original file, in other words, download a new copy in order to do this example, or if you need to continue with data from the prior example. It's very important that you do start with the correct data set. When you open Premier Products, you'll likely see a security warning. And that security warning, where it is, will depend on what version of Access you're actually using. As long as you have version 2007 or later, you'll be able to complete all of the examples for this course. In 2010, which is what I'm using, the security warning is shown right underneath the ruler. You need to click the Enable Content button in order to continue with the example. Once you do that, it's going to open up in an access database similar to this. So let's start off and take a look just at the actual tables. The customer table, when I double click, it will open up the uh, data view and allow me to see 10 records. If you notice down here in the bottom uh, in the navigation, uh, navigation area at the bottom, it'll tell you you're on record 1 of 10. The first icon on the left will change my view. And when I click on that icon, that'll change me from data to layout view. The uh, design view shows me the actual fields and the data types. And whichever field name I have currently selected, the bottom of that window shows me the properties for that particular field. This first table has nine uh, fields in it. The majority of them are text fields. A text field can store an alphanumeric character up to 255 characters. But notice, for example, on the customer number here at the top, if you take a look at the field size property down in the, at the bottom, you'll see that the author has restricted the field size for customer number to three characters. Continuing down, customer name, for example, has been restricted to 35 characters. The street has been restricted to 15 characters, etc. So while a text field can store up to 255 characters, each particular field has been restricted to a lower number of characters. This first table also has a currency data type. Currency data can is, is, uh, data type is for numeric data with up to four decimal places. One of the biggest differences between a currency and a numeric data type is that currency data types are pre-formatted for dollar signs, commas, went over $1,000, and two decimal places. Even though it defaults to show two decimal places, I can store up to four decimal places in a currency data type. Notice that the first field has a little key icon next to it. This little icon indicates that this field is the primary key. A primary key uniquely identifies each record in the table. So in other words, I cannot have two records in this table with the same customer number. The customer number must always be unique. That first icon on the left will switch me back to the customer view. The order line table, if I double click, will open up and it has nine records in it. If I right click on it and choose design, I'll be able to, that's just another way to get to the design view. Notice it has four fields. These two fields together make up the primary key. In other words, I may have a record, more than one record with the same order number. I may have more than one record with the same part number. But I will never have more than one record with the same order number, part number combination. This particular table also introduces the numeric or number data type. 
There are a variety of different sizes for number. This one the author has set to double. So if we look at the properties down below we can see that it's been set for, for a double field size. If you're not familiar with Access and you want more information about numeric field sizes, I'd recommend you click down there and hit the F1 key, which will open up your Access Help window. Since you first clicked on the field size of a number field, it takes you to that con text specific help. So it's immediately telling me, for example, that a byte field size will store a number between 0 and 255 with no decimal precision. I need to use either decimal, single, or double in order to get into decimal precision. By far, long integer and double are the most commonly used number field sizes. I'm going to right click on orders and choose design in order to take a look at the design of the next table. I have three fields. This one introduces a date and time data type. Uh, first notice that my order number is the primary key. It has that little key icon next to it. When I click on order date, you'll see down here in the properties that the author has set no formatting nor input mask for this particular uh, field. Usually when you set date, date time fields, you set both a format and an input mask, but the author has not done either one. That means that the format of my date time will be the format that is set in my control panel in my regional options. I'm going to go ahead and click view to look at the data. You can see that my dates are all set to show the month slash day slash and a four digit year. That's the default in the control panel for my version of Windows. If I right click on part and choose design, looks like this table has six fields. Again, text, number, currency, and part number is my primary key. And finally, if I right click on rep and choose design, looks like here I have nine fields. Rep number is the primary key. I've got text, currency, and number. I'm going to go ahead and close each of these five tables. And then I'm going to switch over to the Database Tools ribbon and click on Relationships. Now if you go into the Relationships and you do not see all of your tables like I do here, you can simply right click in the gray and choose Show All. The author has left all five tables there so when you first come in it, you should be able to see all five. Notice the relationship lines that are drawn from table to table. The rep number here is the primary key and it's connected to the rep number in the customer where it's known as a foreign key. We'll talk more about those words primary key and foreign key as the weeks go on. Remember that the primary key uniquely identifies each record in the table. It's connected to another table through a foreign key. While those two field names do not technically have to have the same name, they have to represent the same thing. And experience from me tells you that it's a lot easier if they have the actually have the same name. Notice the one and the infinity symbol. In Access, remember that the one indicates one and the infinity symbol indicates many. So there is a one to many relationship between the rep and the customer table. So one sales rep has many customers. One customer has many orders. The relationship on these three tables is a little more confusing. You see, one order could be for many parts, and one part could appear on many orders. As the database designer, I've identified the many-to-many -many relationship that exists between orders and parts, and thus created another table, which the authors called order line, in order to accommodate that relationship. Notice that the primary key of the order line table is the combination of the order number and the part number. In other words, I may have multiple records with the same order number and multiple records with the same part number in this order line table, but I will never have two records with the same order number part number combination as any other record in that table. So in other words, to accommodate the many-to-many -many relationship between the orders and part table, the order line table was created, and notice that relationship has been broken down into two one-to-many relationships. I'm going to close the relationships table, and I'm going to take a look at the one and only query that comes with my database. By double-clicking it, I'm brought into the data view of the query. If I go back to the home ribbon and I change my view, I now can see the design. 
We'll spend a lot of time in Chapter 2 working in query by example design within Access. But for now, you can see that there are, is no criteria down here set at all. So all this query is doing is pulling different fields from different tables and allowing them to be viewed in one area. I'm going to go ahead and close that query. I have five forms and four reports that come with the database. A form assists a user with inputting data into the tables. Remember your end users never actually go into the tables. They input and edit the data through forms. A good user interface will have buttons on the forms that will assist the user to get from one form to another. And that's something that the author does not have when we begin. So this is the customers table. This is the orders table. The orders, or excuse me, customers form, orders form. The orders form has a subform built into it. And if you notice right here is an order line subform. So this particular order line subform will never be used by itself. It was only created in order to be embedded into this orders form. I have a part form and a rep form. Each form is tied to a set of data. You can tie a form to either a query or a table. In this example, however, when you begin, each form is tied to a table. By going back to my home ribbon and changing to the design view. Now this is not an access class, so we will not be spending an enormous amount of time in here in the design of forms or reports. But just so you know, if I double click this little box to the left of the ruler, that will bring up my properties of this form. The most important thing here is the record source. This is the table or query that this particular form is tied to in order to populate the data in this form. Our author did not use naming conventions. So as a result, when I see the record source rep, I do not know if that is a table or a query. Fortunately, our author only named one object rep, and that's a table. Remember when in our lecture when we discussed naming conventions, the better name would have been TBL rep. So that when I look at it, for example, in the property sheet of a former report, I can instantly tell if it's a table or a query that it's tied to rather than having to go back to my database and, and find the object. I'm going to go ahead and close the property sheet, and then I'm going to go ahead and close each of the four forms. I also have four reports. While a form is designed for on-screen, a report is designed for a printer. <coughs> so I have the customer report, the orders report, the part report, and the rep report. In a similar fashion, if I go back to my home ribbon and change to the design view, I can again double click to the left of the ruler to bring up those properties. The property sheet shows me the record source. Again, I'm on the rep report and it's getting its data from the rep table. The only reason I know it's a table is because I'd have to look back here at my tables and queries and I'd see the only one I have is a table named rep. Again, naming conventions would have made this a much easier situation for me. There are databases you're going to work in that have hundreds of tables and hundreds if not thousands of queries. So using a naming convention can assist you in identifying those items as you, as you work with them as record sources for, for queries, for uh, forms, for reports, for formulas, and even in your Visual Basic code. So that's an overview of where you're starting with the Premier Products database.